Minecraft secrets you're about to hear in this video are gonna have you changing the way you play the game forever. Some of them are scary, but some of them are just downright evil. And we're starting with Minecraft's cave system is alive. We all know that Minecraft is home to some of the scariest mobs, but today I'm going to tell you about the scariest one of them all. You see this mob every time you play the game, but you have never noticed it. You hear this mob all the time, but you don't even think about it. What is this mob? It's a freaking Minecraft cave. You might be laughing at me and even typing in the comments, XD Preston, but listen. It might not be like the rest of the mobs in Minecraft, but it is a living and breathing creature. Have you ever noticed something mysterious about caves? The way that they always feel one step ahead like they're trying to kill you? Do you think there's a coincidence that when you dig down, there's always lava beneath you? No! Or that diamonds are always next to dangerous locations? There must be something else going on here. The caves make a lot of really scary noises like this. Or this. But nothing is scary as what the game files call cave11.ogg. I'm getting goosebumps listening to this. Can you explain to me why a normal cave would ever make that noise? Please tell me what that sounds like. Listen to it again, even slow the clip down by half if you need to. It sounds like breathing. We're not talking about Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. This is actual breathing. The caves in the game of Minecraft are alive and are trying to end the lives of everybody who stepped foot in them. Ravagers are just mutated villagers. Ravagers are one of Minecraft's most dangerous mobs, but have you really ever thought about these creatures? Where did the villagers get them? And more importantly, what are they? With their creepy jaws that look stitched together and their dead eyes? You might just say, well, they're scary. They're in the overworld, but no, stop. Think about it. How come we never see ravagers in the wild? You'd think someone would find one roaming around considering that they are one of the largest mobs in Minecraft. You can't miss them. They're the size of an elephant, but that begs the question. How do the illagers have them? Do they have access to a secret biome with dangerous mobs? Or what if they transform animals already found in the game? And since we have no proof of these theories, I had to keep digging and what I found is now going to haunt me for the rest of my life. If you look at the Ravager, you will start to notice some scarily similar features to someone we hold near and dear in our hearts, the Villager. If you look closely, you realize that they have identical eyes and noses. And on top of that, listen to what a Villager sounds like. <sighs> now listen to the Ravager. <sighs> and now we're gonna play those at the same time. <sighs> Did you notice something eerie? They have the same voice. The only time something like this has ever happened is in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I'm not even gonna tell you what happens because if you know, you know, but it's awful. And this was the final straw that led me to my conclusion. Illagers are inhumanely mutating villagers to create their worst enemy, the Ravagers. This would also make sense why Ravagers are friendly to rabbits because they were originally just a gentle loving farmer villager before they were turned into a beast. And the scariest thing to top it off, Illagers also have the colors of Steve in their mansion. So does that mean they're also trying to mutate Steve? And that's why in the next version of Minecraft, they're releasing new default skins. Hero Brian is actually a bounty hunter for justice that only hunts bad players in the game of Minecraft. Most of you know who Hero Brian is, but do you know where he came from? Many online say he exists to scare you, or even worse, kill you. But that is not necessarily true. I figured out where Hero Brian came from and why he's here. Mojang has barely spoken about him, but I investigated every report on Herobrine. Every person he hunted had one thing in common. They were bad players. Bullies, trolls, you name it. The players trolled people, killed their friends, and even blew up their houses. Like this video if you've ever been trolled by your friends in Minecraft. Since Mojang hadn't banned people until recently, they needed an enforcer on call that could stay fully under the radar. Herobrine was their answer. An assassin that stayed under the radar to do the bidding for good. But he's always seen as the villain. Herobrine punished the bad players and made sure they could never troll or be mean to anyone ever again. The Warden was a king of the ancient world and was also its greatest demise. I've spoken about the Warden before, but I've recently uncovered new information that reveals an entirely different story about the Warden. As we know, the Warden lives in the deep dark, a biome so large, it literally makes you wonder why there's only one that's roaming. The deep dark is the only biome where no mobs can spawn. But why? 
New information tells us that the Warden was actually once the king of an ancient city that ruled everything beneath our feet. But a rival tribe did not like the Warden deciding what happened in the underworld. And after many years of peace, the rival tribe declared war on an entire Warden tribe. They battled for centuries with no true victory. Until one day, the Warden tribe had taken on serious damage and even many fatalities, meaning the evil tribe was not willing to let up. Their hope was fading quick. One warden knew there was only one way to save his people. He ran out with a white banner surrendering to the evil mutant mobs and hoped that it would save his people. And it worked. Well, kind of. They signed a treaty freeing the remaining wardens and allowed them to live in peace. Except for one. The warden who is the reason his people were saved was cursed to stay and protect his abandoned land for the rest of his life, aka eternity. And anyone who breaks into this now forgotten land will summon this warden and curse him with the burden to fight them off time and time again, forever. The Void is an interdimensional portal to the overworld. And here's why. Many believe there is no end to the Void unless you die. Comment if this has ever happened to you. The Void is vast and infinite which is exactly what Mojang wants you to think. But it's much smaller than you might realize. Everyone knows there's a main way to escape by killing the Ender Dragon, but I found a different way. If you jump into the void in survival mode, it will kill you before you reach the end. But that isn't necessarily true with the right tweaks. If you give yourself max resistance so you're invincible and jump into the void, there's a very slim chance you will be teleported to a Woodland Mansion. The Woodland Mansion is the key to the entire operation. If you play on mobile, you'll notice that your battery drains faster when you're in the mansion. Seriously, check it out for yourself. I didn't even believe it at first. They have structures in their mansion that pull energy from your device and can crash your Minecraft world if they want to. As we already know, the Woodland Mansion is the centerpiece in an attempt to escape out of the game and into our actual world. Was the void just the beginning? Destroying every single structure in the nearest Woodland Mansion seems to be the only answer in protecting you from them. Or is that what they want you to think? And even if you do, there's always another one that magically appears. Steve and Alex were real players that were trapped in Minecraft, just like in Jumanji. Minecraft has tons of amazing mobs and creatures, but there are none as iconic as the people you and I play as, Steve and Alex. But have you ever wondered where Minecraft's lovable mascots came from? Well, you better buckle up, Buttercup, for this one, because this myth is quite terrifying. This story takes us back to the first ever update of Minecraft. Notch had just finished the first version ever and was about to release it to the public. But before that, he had to have the game playtested. He brought in a lovely married couple to playtest the game together, and they loved it. Exploring caves and building the first ever Minecraft creations, they were having the most amazing time in this game. In fact, they got so lost in it that they couldn't stop playing. They played so much that Notch forgot about them. But this was a big mistake. See, Minecraft was still in its beginning stages and the game had some unstable issues to say the least. At this point in time, the slightest bugs created massive problems that broke the game, like never ending worlds, accidentally creating Herobrine, or even affecting things in real life. So one day when Notch found a game breaking bug, he realized that he had to delete it. But the problem was he didn't realize the married couple was still playing the game at this time. But once he deleted the version, it was already too late. Notch reached out to apologize, but they didn't answer. The next day, he logged into play and realized something very disturbing. His default Minecraft skin was replaced with a man that had blue jeans and a blue shirt with brown hair and a mustache. At this moment in time, he realized what he had done. The playtesters were playing the game when the version of Minecraft got deleted and now they were trapped in the game. What were the names of the married couple? Steve and Alex. So to this day, you must know that you, myself, and everybody else that touches the game of Minecraft are playing the game through the eyes of real, actual people. Diamonds actually come from rare axolotls. Ah, diamonds. Everyone's favorite ore in all of Minecraft. The feeling you get when you have searched tirelessly for hours upon hours, and then you finally see a blue sparkle in the distance, and you finally arrive to mine it. That has to be the best feeling in the game, and I'm about to ruin it. After hearing this, you might never want to mine a diamond again. Where did it come from and what is it? We know that diamonds in real life are just a type of mineral, but Minecraft has a way of taking simple things and giving them very scary origins. Were they created by the illagers to kill their enemies? Or by ancient builders to power their kingdoms? We have no evidence for either of these, plus diamonds seem to be an organically spawning block and thus they weren't created. But that doesn't mean they didn't come from something else. Diamonds are ancient, so I thought back to the most ancient mobs in Minecraft. Enderman can carry blocks, so maybe they brought them from the end, but that can't be. Diamonds are rare, and there aren't even enough around to prove that. 
In fact, the truth is that it's something much darker. What is the most ancient looking mob in Minecraft? A fan favorite, the axolotl. And that's when the sad truth all started to piece together. Even though axolotls are ancient, they aren't quite rare enough to connect to diamonds, you might say. Aha, but they have many different colors, don't they? And all with different rarities. And which one of them is the rarest of all? Blue axolotls. And then I remembered something I read on the Minecraft wiki. In ancient times, the blue axolotl was a cave creature that was only driven to extinction by the warden. The sad truth all makes sense. Diamonds are just the crystallized, decayed bodies of blue axolotls. The next time you try to mine a diamond ore, think about your pet axolotl and how you're actually mining its ancestors. It's crazy. What is past the 200 block limit in Minecraft? The void is one of Minecraft's biggest questions. What is below the surface and what secrets are down there? But I believe the void has done exactly what the developers wanted to do. Throw you off by looking down instead of looking what's above. 320 blocks above the ground is where you will find Minecraft sky limit. A barrier that you can't build past no matter what you do. But have you ever wondered why there's a sky limit? I mean, it's not like the devs needed to add this. Minecraft is long enough to fit more than a thousand real life Earths inside of it. There are trillions of blocks in this landscape without any lag. So I ask again, why the height limit? Is it so that the mobs that can fly don't fly too high? Or because the developers just couldn't be bothered? No, it can't be. But the devs really don't want us to build up there. Why is that though? What would we find if we did? What if it's where the developers are secretly storing the biomes they're currently working on? Or better yet, just like the Tower of Babel in the Bible, if you built high enough, you could reach Minecraft heaven. Sounds legit to me. Elder Guardians are secretly robots that were made to spy on you. Honestly, what more can be said about these mobs? We all know that they are Minecraft's lamest boss, but what if there is a reason for that? What if there is more to this creature than meets the eyes? Um, or I because they're, they're cyclopses. At a glance, the Elder Guardian just looks like a fish creature with fins and one eye. Nothing to see here, right? Wrong. Because then I remembered the way he attacks you. Shooting a laser beam out of his eye? That's pretty odd for an animal, don't you think? Minecraft has some pretty unique mystical mobs, but none of them have a feature as unique as a charged laser beam. The Elder Guardian's basically a Pokemon. That got me thinking though, what else is different from this mob when compared to the others? These are marine creatures that don't suffocate on land like every other fish. Chalk it up to the fact that it's a video game mechanic, but then why does every other fish in Minecraft die on land? Pufferfish, cod, salmon, all of them run out of air on the surface. Weird. It's almost as if the Elder Guardian isn't a normal animal at all. And that made me take a look at their design again. And this time I looked even closer. Notice that their skin looks cracked and is a light shade of blue. Hmm, doesn't that sound familiar? Before I tell you the answer, comment what you think the answer is. That's right, a prismarine block. One might even be tempted to see this and think, ah, the Elder Guardians can camouflage and that is why they look like prismarine. But why do they only look like this and never change? They even drop prismarine crystals. It seems like they aren't even camouflaging at all, but were originally built from this stone like mechanical creatures. This myth states the Elder Guardian are robots designed to watch your every move. Unlike the Ender Dragon that dies forever once you kill it, there are millions of these creatures in the ocean monuments around the world, made to watch your every move. But why are they watching us? What if they are programmed by the developers to make sure that players aren't cheating? What if they are made by the Illagers to spy on players helping villagers? We might never find out, but we do know that through the Elder Guardian's eye, something or somebody is watching you. Endermen were originally humans. Minecraft doesn't have a boogeyman, but if it did, it would be the Endermen. They creep you out when you are just trying to go about your day in Minecraft. But what if you have always been scared of them for a different reason than you had originally thought? What if it's because they remind you of something that you just can't put your finger on? After all, they are one of the only non-animal passive mobs in the game. But why don't they attack you unless they look at you? Are they mostly blind? Do they have some sort of programming? None of the above. In fact, the truth is far more terrifying. In Minecraft's official book, it tells you that the Endermen pick up blocks because they are trying to play. Why would the Endermen want to play if they're a scary mob trying to kill us? Are Endermen just scary looking mobs and that's the end of it? Well, no, there's more to this. I'm going to play a clip of the Endermen and I want you to tell me if you notice anything. Did you hear it? If not, listen again. They say, hey, what's up? Look for the eye. Enderman can clearly speak. Bro, I'm getting so many goosebumps right now. That can't be? No other mob in the game can do this, even villagers. And once I saw this picture from the official Minecraft mob book, everything started to make sense. This is a picture of the Enderman anatomy. Notice that the Enderman's brain looks eerily familiar. 
This made me come to the final conclusion that Endermen were originally humans. The origins of Villar. It's time we dive into literally the most horrifying entity in all of Minecraft. Villar. Villar has been spotted in villagers around the world pretending to just be a friendly villager, but just as players try to make a trade, he turns around and the last thing they ever see is his face. It's terrifying. There isn't much information about this creature online. At least, that's what most people think. However, if you dig deep enough, you can find where he or it came from. But I wouldn't recommend doing this. If you like sleeping safely at night at least. This myth states that there was once a villager like any other. He kindly traded players food, took care of his villager family, and wanted to live a peaceful life. But one day there was a raid on his village. His friends were being killed by the illagers when all of a sudden a player arrived. The player had diamond armor and could certainly defend his village and save his family. But as he called to this hero in diamond armor to save them, he realized something that sent shivers down his spine. Next to this player were the bodies of his friends and then that's when he realized the player was fighting with the illagers. The player then came into the villager's house and defeated his own family. The worst part? The player left the villager alive to send a message. His village, his friends, his family, all destroyed. The in-game villager became so enraged at this player that something impossible started happening. He started to transcend the game and then something snapped. He then glitched into the code of the game and gained the power to control whatever it is he wishes. Ever since then, he has been waiting in villages, blending in, killing innocent Minecraft players, and waiting to get vengeance on the one player who raided his village. This same villager now goes by the name as Villar. You might think that Villar is just a name to represent that he is glitchy and breaks the game, but I think it stands for something else. Revenge.